Hey guys, I'm Regis Baddy. Um, not your usual host for Minute Thoughts, but I'm here. Um, our host, Amano, couldn't be here. Um, but yeah, Minute Thoughts is a cultural conversation amongst creatives uh, produced by Minute Shorts. And we have the director and producer of the short film, uh, Play It Safe. Would you like to introduce yourself, guys? Who wants to go first? Hey, um, I'll go first. Hey, I'm Mitch Kalisa, director and writer of Play It Safe. Hey, I'm Chris Tumizu. I'm the producer of Play It Safe. Nice. I'm going to start with an easy one, guys. Um, how did Play It Safe come about? Was it, um, was it the baby of Mitch or Chris? And yeah, you want to walk me through the process? Cool. I'll start. So... Yeah, the film I wrote a um, couple of years before I, I approached Chris with it. So me and Chris were talking about an, uh, essentially music video projects and I let him know that I had some work that I'd written and Play It Safe was one of these stories. Um, and yeah, we talked through the story uh, and then yeah, I'll let Chris uh, fill in his thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I guess, so So I I saw uh, Mitch did a music video online. It's going to sound boring, but like, um, he, that's how I discovered Mitch's work. He did this music video that I saw and I was just like gobsmacked. I was like, if there was something about it, I'd never seen someone edit a music video like that. And I could tell that obviously he didn't necessarily have loads of resources behind him, but I could tell this is like someone who was really creative and who had something about how they viewed the world because of obviously the edit is as important as whatever you shoot you know like how you design that is what you're going to be putting on the screen um yeah and then after that I was like well I'm in kind of like filmmaking mode I've always wanted to make more and more shorts and Mitch was like well this is the story this is kind of where I well Mitch actually had a, had a body of work um actually he had a few different shorts all that are really great um but play it safe I think just rang true to me and I think we just connected on it because I also went to drama school as well. And I think I was very clearly aware of the dynamic and the environment that he was experiencing, hence writing that film. Right. Um, so much so that we were both kind of like, you know what? I think not only is this like a really great thing that we have bonded over, we need to fucking talk about this. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't know if swearing is an issue or not. Yeah, no. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, and yeah, I don't know. It, out of that, we were kind of like, okay, cool, let's figure out how to make this um we were just really passionate and then wanted to make it and then found a way to do it <laughs> yeah no that's really cool and obviously the reason that we're here is um your film was biffa nominated i i imagine to see that sort of reaction for something that was so personal like must have felt good um could you speak towards i guess making the film um having it seen and the feeling of it being Biffa nominated, if you had any feeling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were some feelings. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously we made the film using our own resources. Like, yeah, we had to pull a lot of stuff together, cut a lot of favors. Um, and it was incredible because everyone on the project was like down on a, yeah on a really personal level in trying to pull this project together so when we were making it we obviously had ambitions to make something good but um i think we were never really chasing any kind of big acclaim essentially it was about being true to this story and doing it justice so yeah we after we made the project and then we ended up getting some an incredible festival acclaim and obviously ended up at the Biffers. It was, yeah, like, um, it's hard to put into words, but it was like an overwhelming feeling, you know, because not only was it being um, like respected and acknowledged by um, the filmmaking community, but we were also touching real people essentially, like uh, if, the audience that it allowed us to speak to outside of the film community was the most most um, emotional for, for me specifically like th this idea of 
I feel like a lot of films, especially ones that have a, a message, uh, can sometimes just end up speaking to, preaching to the choir, talking yeah. to people who already um, are, um, are on side, but with the success that Biffer and other festivals brought to the film, it felt that it, it was able to live outside of this and, and go much further and, and yeah, really um, provoke interesting conversations and interesting debates around the topic, which is what I hope to do with that piece of work. So yeah, that was the experience of getting to Biffa for me. Yeah, I think you hope that experience happens with obviously every film. And I think what you're saying there where like, I, I think that's the power of short films in a lot of way. I think you hear a lot of people say that this is a universal film. This is um, a film that has obviously touched so many, but I think the fact that this is such a specific story um, and obviously it's gotten out there, I think is also a testament to what short film can do. I think a lot of the time long form films are kind of made with the purpose of like being universal and kind of preaching mm. to the choir as you would say but I think do you I, I I yeah I just wanted to touch on whether you think whether what your thoughts are about the power of short film being able to convey a specific message like is that something you would agree with or De definitely definitely I think yeah there's I mean, I guess maybe it's something to do with attention spans or something but it, but like obviously being able to pass on something that's so f for instance one of the uh, key moments for me when I realized this film was really touching people is when I got a um, I got a screenshot from from my sister <laughs> and she was in a in a group chat where someone posted my film into the group chat right. and I figured out that well she figured out that she'd passed it to to one or two friends and then they must have passed it to one or two friends and it essentially it organically started to to get passed around and shared which was yeah uh, not what we wanted to happen but but it showed me like how how much um it was touching people and then I looked back on the Vimeo statistics and it was like yeah this this has been seen by a lot of people yeah. so for me in that moment I was like man yeah this is the power of a short film it's like it, it it's to the point and it's urgent and it kind of it's easier to to share the love in that respect it's easier for people to to really um yeah share it around to to people and yeah. and want to talk about it uh, yeah. which is a bit more of a challenge with a like a two-hour feature but yeah i'll throw it back to chris on that one I mean, I echo everything that Mitch has said, you know, I think it's obviously something that the organic traction this film has got is the most rewarding thing for us. Because I think, you know, we're obviously very lucky working in the film industry. We're privileged enough to do so because, you know, it's a very hard industry to get into. You have to really work at it or, you know, it's you or you know people. Um, and I think for both of us, I'm just not really interested in just making films for the people that we know. I want to make yeah. films with interesting messages yeah. that hopefully can connect with other people. And me and Mitch, it's kind of interesting because we were just talking about it a second ago. I'm really proud of the fact that like as people, we're excited to tell stories like for like the audience, for public, for the public in general. And I think like this isn't us trying to be universal, like you said, Reg, it's just the case of it like, we really care about the values and the themes of the film. This was one of many characters that actually Mitch has written. And I think yeah. what's great is this is hopefully the beginning of the characters you're gonna see from Mitch's world and how he looks at the world in general. Um, so I think it's been great. I think it's been, yeah, it's been amazing to see. And I think short films obviously do present such an incredible opportunity um, if they do connect, you know, mm. with people. Um, mm. And yeah, it's just it's just been a wild ride to be honest. We're very grateful. That's awesome. And I think you spoke at the start about the challenges and like pulling favors and the difficulty of like going from something that's written that you both agree is obviously an amazing piece of work to actually making it happen. Um, do you want to speak towards like 
what those actual challenges were and like is there anything you would kind of do differently in the process or um maybe hope hope will change in the process of creating your next piece of work I think that yeah that with. question specifically to Chris I think I think as a producer oh, you probably, okay. uh, you probably yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I think what I've learned um is that I think we've uh, well not to just talk for Mitch but I think what it's taught us is that we obviously have a very clear synergy and a hunch for the kind of stuff that we want to make and that we think it's it's worth making and it's good and it's just reminded me that like to just keep going you know I think what I want to remind other people for if anyone's watching this is like you know we are no different to anyone else out there wanting to go and make a film and figuring out how to do it you know yes we do also work in the industry in music videos and commercials and other ways but you know if, if you've got a good idea and you've got a good way about you and, and pulling favors and bringing people together there's no reason why you can't make anything that you want to it's just about the work that you put in and obviously you need a good script and Mitch had the good script so that yeah. made things a lot easier for me um but yeah I think it's just taught me to to have confidence in myself which probably sounds arrogant it's not meant to sound arrogant but I think that's what I learned and hopefully what Mitch will take away or has taken away from it as well yeah what about you Mitch yeah 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 um I I completely agree with what Chris has been saying I think on a on a very kind of practical level we had uh, like complexities in terms of like um getting enough film together getting enough crew together all those kinds of things but i would i would say that even if we shot it on a phone we probably would have had some some kind of budgetary issue so i i think that especially when you're working independently uh um, when you're sorry say that again sorry chris I was just going to say that's, that's very true. I think there's always going to be an issue for Mitch's conversation. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, just kind of to the, the filmmakers who might be watching this kind of waiting for the right time, waiting for the right size budget. I feel like, yeah, like essentially do it with what you can do it with and, and get it done. Um, I think that's... Um, because yeah, there, there's um, from yeah from the amount of cast we had, uh, our um, minimal budget in in certain departments, like there was a, a list of things that probably could have been better uh, in in regards to the challenges of of the production, but um, but yeah, I feel like it's always going to happen and you're always you could always do it better in, in some shape or form so yeah. yeah my lesson was to not not wait for that magic moment where everything aligns ideally you know like adapt and and work with what you have and like what it comes down to at the end of the day is the is the story and your characters and your performances that's what stays with an audience Right. your messaging all that stuff is what's actually important you know um as i said we, it could have been on an iphone and i feel like this film still would have connected yeah um, so yeah uh, i i would encourage people to do it do do it with what they've got access to essentially yeah i, I don't so, even know if i've answered your question there. no like, you, have, like, you have you uh, have you were talking about yeah challenges but yeah. i i feel like sometimes sorry to challenges, jump in, yeah. but i feel like sometimes that unwanted pressure can kind of make the film what it is and then uh chris i mean as a producer i do think those kind of challenges are creative in in itself um and like figuring out problem solving within that is kind of being creative in itself so i think i think that's what a lot of people misunderstand about producing as well so Hats off to you guys. Um, and are you guys officially like a duo now? Like, do you have anything else in the pipeline? Do you plan to work together on more stuff in the future? Like what's on the horizon? Yeah, I guess so. So well, we're not a, a duo in, a, in that respect. Like, you know, Mitch is very much 
an individual and a creative person and entity into his own right. And um, uh, basically we are working on stuff together, but we're also working on stuff separately, which is really exciting. So um, I don't think there'll be a world where we ever stop working together, but um, but yeah, I think we're just exploring loads of opportunities really. Yeah. And we'll um, yeah. obviously keep an, an eye out for Play It Safe anyway. Uh, sorry, Mitch, you were about to say something. No, no, I was just gonna, uh say uh, kind of support what Chris is saying I think yeah we've we've loved um I, I've loved I'm hoping Chris did as well but it was yeah really <laughs> really, amazing to work. <laughs> really incredible to work with him on uh, on play it safe and yeah I think we share uh, a vision and a, and a kind of um yeah focus in, in the kind of work that excites us so yeah I think going forward we'll definitely be the some more projects together i think there's like a lot it's i mean actually this is a question for you because i think it always comes down to the kind of ideas that we seem to come up with right or that we're like working mm. on trying to figure out but like i think me and mitch have had a very similar life experience or exposure or, or upbringing in some way and i think that that's that's had a lot of input into the creative of what we put together yeah. now it's not to say that i can obviously connect to the same racial microaggressions I obviously can't but I can see those things I have been around those situations. Um, and as well as that, you know, I think we both have um, quite similar stories from like our parents and our upbringing that I think are really interesting, like a massive part of what makes us who we are. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting. I, I look forward to seeing how that kind of manifests itself to the next project really. Um, Amazing. Yeah. 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 And this is a question that we like to ask for everyone, obviously, before we, kind of go and I think it's particularly relevant with this film and like being typecast or being uh one thing but what's something you you'd like to do if you weren't working in film or what's like a hobby of yours that might surprise people might might surprise me something that surprises yourself I don't know all of the above <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I, before um, like the pandemic kind of shut everything down, I was, I was doing some Olympic weightlifting training and after pandemic, it's kind of killed it for me. So um, my goal going forward is to, to be able to clean and jerk a hundred kilograms and I'm, if if things uh, if things don't go well in the filmmaking, I'm just going to focus <laughs> on that. <laughs> Fair enough. Wow, <laughs> Chris. Do you know what I don't know, man? Like I really don't know. I think I remember the day I decided to want to be in film or knew that I wanted to do that, and I was five years old, and I still remember it as clear as day, and that hasn't changed. I've had different versions of me like trying to act, trying to direct, trying to do whatever and realized that I just, I really enjoy producing and I'm good at it. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything else I would put on this no. world or apart from making films. And if I can't make them, then I don't know. I'll probably just keep, you know, die trying or something. Yeah. <laughs> any, <laughs> any, any small hobbies, <laughs> any, any little things that, uh, people might not know about you are you are you keeping your cards close to your chest chris is a collector <laughs> collect he's a collector stuff. you should talk about that he's a good actor uh, okay a I, collector i i i collect that i i'm a collector like i i i i mean i don't know i i just i love it's all film-based stuff but like i love movie memorabilia but it's, right. but not like not like props and stuff like that like but more like i love movie merch and like promotional items that were made for films that basically are so pointless that you kind of wonder who gave the person <laughs> the to make these things and right. they, they, they like they really inspired me in like marketing campaigns and how i approach films i can't wait obviously on the long form side of our journey to to kind of push that side more and, and the merchandising element mm -hmm. but like yeah i love like i have vintage movie t-shirts like weird stuff like i'm trying to think of an example like I don't know I, there's a film called Airheads that's a, like an old like comedy film um right. that they basically did this like really weird box for that was going out to like all the video stores when it came out um this has got nothing to do with my hobbies it's just stuff that I enjoy buying 
<laughs> I mean, it's a hobby. So guess, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess yeah, movie memorabilia, movie merch. I probably would run. I hope if yeah, if I have to retire in any such capacity, I probably will end up running some sort of weird movie merch store that like no one would go to. But hopefully, I'd be. Rich <laughs> I, I'd definitely go. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hang out there we'll be those old people that, that are outside you know that like chill outside the store yeah, <laughs> yeah. just like, yeah drinking just tea over there yeah like, with, you know, with like, your little like, like deck chair or whatever they call it yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like you know and do the right thing there's that corner yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. with an umbrella like, <laughs> that's all i want when i've yeah. made it you know that's that's yeah so that so, so that's where you'll find me and Mitch if it goes badly or well. Depending nice. On nice. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you in the year 2050 on the deck chair. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, thank you guys. I wish we had more time. Um, but thank you, obviously, for joining me for this conversation. Um, so thoughts on shorts. Um, this is one of the episodes that we're doing in our series uh, with Biffa on their Biffa Takeover Week. Um, and thank you, Chris and Mitch, for joining us today to discuss Play It Safe. And um, hope you guys have a good time with the film. And obviously, many people keep seeing it. And yeah, we'll be hearing about it soon. Cheers, guys. Thank Peace. you so much, Ray. Nice one.